I don't know if this happens to anybody else, but it always happens to me. My project starts as one thing and gets out of, like, I don't know out of hand, but it kind of escalates or uh, goes from one thing to the next to the next to the next. So I've got this Atlas Clausing lathe, cute little lathe, but the, lathe, the, the chuck was a little six inch chuck and it was worn out and it wouldn't hold the tolerance or anything like that. So what I did was, oh, well, I'll buy a new chuck for it. I got a Chinese chuck and it holds a pretty good tolerance. So now I'm thinking, well, now that I can hold the tolerance, I really need some sort of way to let me know where I'm at on my X and my Z, right? So I thought, well, travel dial or a couple indicators, you know, I do that and it, it's kind of a pain. So I thought, well, now that I got the chuck, why don't I do a readout? Yeah, good idea, readout, okay. Now, how am I gonna hold up the readout? I didn't have any brackets or any really super great ideas. So I thought, well, I need a backsplash for the lathe, so why don't I build a backsplash for the lathe and it'll be a combination of that and a readout holder. So I built this frame Drilled and tapped the, the base of the machine, put a couple of tabs on there and bent up some inch and a half tubing and you're kind of zippy and racy looking. So that's the backsplash to hold the readout that I had to buy because I got the chuck so I could hold the tolerance. So the bracketry I used for uh, the scales, you know, I just kind of mixed and matched what they, uh, what they gave you in the kit. It's a Chinese kit, you know, you see them all over eBay and these places. So I mounted the, the pickup for the glass scale un underneath the carriage here. And I got a couple of brackets just into the the bed there. I, this used to have a small little aluminum deal that came out to protect the threads. So I've added just a I had a piece of two inch by four uh, rectangular aluminum. So I cut the the one side of it off, and I just used that to extend that a little bit and as the one anchor point for this uh, this scale here. I went underneath the carriage with a couple of pieces of angle for the, the pickup there. And we'll, and I just may have had a piece of heavy angle aluminum and I made the front mount for there. I, spaced it out a little bit so I'd have a good good travel each way. I wouldn't run into anything. So, you know, the scale is bigger than the actual travel, but uh, it covers the whole thing pretty well. So that's how I mounted the scales that I needed for the readout because I got a chuck. And now I'll have the backsplash. I'll throw the sheet metal in there for you and you can see how that's going to look and uh, here's a piece of sheet metal it's like probably 24 gauge galvanized it's pretty light duty it uh, bought it at the steel place in the remnant department uh, but it works good for this so I bent it up did a little trickiness over here Spot welded it together. All right, let's punch some holes in this thing and let's screw it onto the frame. All right, we're gonna pre-drill this backsplash panel uh, just to make it easier to uh, attach it to the framework. So just kind of laying things out.
you know, it's not it doesn't have to be super accurate. Uh, let's go in about half an inch because it's on one inch, one inch square tubing. All right, I'm gonna get a punch. And we'll punch that. I like these little automatic center punches. Sometimes they kind of wear out and then they misfire, but we'll try to we'll see if this uh, works today. Oh, yeah, that's good. What I do is get a little bit of a, a divot going, and I'll get my Whitney punch and we'll pre-punch those. All right, these are punches. They have uh, knockoffs too, made by the Chinese guys. But this is a, a genuine uh, Whitney punch, and uh, they have a bunch of different dies that go in here for different diameter holes. So I think this one is a uh, looks like a three sixteenths. So we'll, what you do is say have a little bit of a. Let's see if we can see that here. You got a little bit of a point on the one die there. So what I do is with that little center punch deal, I use that to to find the 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 point or use the point to find the center punch. Then I know I'm right on the, the whole center. So you kind of just drag it along until I feel it drop into the hole from the center punch. Boom. And then we do it over here on this one. There we go. And there we go. So now I have my holes pre-drilled. Then when I put it up on the on the frame, I can just run a uh, self-tapping and drilling or self-drilling and self-tapping screw to hold that thing on and I can take it on and off as I need to instead of using popper bits where which are more of a semi-permanent thing so I don't know if I'll have to take this on and off at all for maintenance that's why I'll do it this way inch. They're just self-drilling lath screws. Pretty, pretty low-key deal. And we'll just start uh, impact but maybe I'll put one on the top over here too just to hold it in place so it doesn't move drilled in a couple of spots the one inch square tubing for the shelf that's going to go on the other side and uh, so now I just need to go through where I pre-drilled through the sheet metal then I can bolt the, the uh, shelf on the other side
go. Nice. Get a little countersink and we'll hit them from the other side. Okay, I'm just gonna hit these real quick with a little countersink just to get the burr off of those. I made this shelf out of one inch square tubing and some one inch angle. So let's that little set up there. Get my 716 wrench. Alright. Got a little bit of a little bullet level. Just to check. Make sure we're looking good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's tighten it up. to go inside of here and what I can do is this one is on an angle I'll have some holes in there and I can throw my live center and my chuck and my drill chuck and stuff through the little holes in there then these shelves will be for for the tooling and, and stuff like that so. okay, we go. I got these cool little LED lights online. They're kind of bright, kind of nice. 
I've welded some tabs up here. They're tabs you get at the metal store for people doing gates and all fences and all kinds of unusual stuff. They're pretty handy. zip tie and we'll tie it off to that upright. Okay. Yeah, that'll be enough light to do anything you need to do here. It's nice and bright. Okay, what's next? Three pieces, my faces. Nothing goes in there. 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 So this way we can put tools in there. Everything is cool. And then on here we can throw some of our KDK uh, tool holders. And then maybe put some oil or something up on top of there, or an indicator, or who knows what. But there, that's that.